What is good guys? I'm back on the mic today from Spectral Sound and welcome to today's video. Then in today's tutorial, we are going to go over how to make an excellent bass. Now when I say excellent, that's not like, oh, this bass is really good. It's excellent. It's excellent as the artist with an X. So I'm going to play you uh, a little bit of this track by Excellent. This is Kill Me. Kill me. Excellent's an awesome sound designer. He has some great sounds, but the sound we're gonna go over today is this sound right here That high screech sound and this is my replication of it Now as you can see that sounds extremely similar. We're gonna go over exactly how I made this so Fortunately, I'm gonna start I'm gonna start doing tutorials where you don't have to download the wavetables. I've done some tutorials in the past we have to like download wavetables or like look up the pictures and stuff and that, that makes things complicated. I know it's a lot easier if the wavetables are already in Serum. So that's what I'm gonna try to do from now on unless I give out a free like wavetable sample pack then I can show you how I did stuff with those wavetables but but that, that's for later, that's not coming yet. So right here we've got a Monster 7 and I've just used the saw from Basic Shapes. Now let's let's start from the beginning. I have a little bit of a tack here that's not that's not necessarily relevant. That's just there. Just there's there was a little click in the beginning, and I just decided to take it out. It's just what I heard. All right, sub oscillator. Turn the sub on. You have it on direct out, so it's not getting messed up by all of this. And you have a sine wave down two octaves. I'm modulating the level from zero to seventy five percent, so it's going from zero up to normal. And I have just this basic little slide up right there and that's going to be modulating 15 different things so we're doing a lot here all right and now on to oscillator a there's a monster 7 in the spectral tab and we are going the wavetable position from 1 to 22 so we're just starting at the very beginning and going up to around there and let's take the fm it would take this down we'll get to the fm once we talk about oscillator b and now the level is doing the exact same thing as the sub it's going from 0% all the way to 75%, so from 0 to normal. And n none of this, y you can you can see I didn't do anything here, but it's down two octaves. That's going to be uh, that's going to be critical cuz otherwise your sound will be really weird with the FM. Now, onto oscillator B, I have just the basic shapes and I've chosen the wave table position of a saw wave right there. And now I have turned sync on. What's is anything modulating sync? I don't think anything's modulating sync should be I don't know what's modulating sync there's something I don't know what it is though let me, let me go into my matrix that's really weird let's uh, filter B warp oh macro one. Oh yeah the the macro right here is modulating the sync I have the um level of the sink here at 5.02%, you just do five, it's going be fine. And it's going up 36. And I've put that on a macro here and you can adjust the actual depth of how screechy it is, the, the, the kind of screech, like the style, I guess the timbre you could call it, or I, I don't know, so, something like that. It's how it sounds. So let's, let's play around with this, 37%, gotta help me remember that. So we can adjust the depth, which is what this is right here. And I liked 37 as my position for this one. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Okay. And so that's the sync. Uh, saw wave, it's down one semitone. That's just because with the sync on, the way I had it, it bumped it up. It was actually a semitone higher because of this saw sync, because the saw sync can kind of change the pitch. So I had to compensate for that. I had to um, bring another, bring just a generic saw wave up there and pitch the sound. But if you just bring it down one semitone, then you should be fine. All right, you leave the octave at normal, no, no unison. 
uh, wave table sync. Yeah, we we're not, the level's all the way down because this isn't actually making sound. If it were making sound, we'd hear this. And that's gross. We don't want that. We just want the frequency modulation, which the frequency modulating for this modulation for this is starting at 0%, and this LFO is bringing it up to 44%. So that's going to be very critical to this sound. Without the frequency modulation, it kind of sucks. Yeah. I mean, that's got potential to become something cool, but I had I had to put the FM in there to give it the screechiness. All right. Now on to the filter. I have a high pass twelve filter here, which I love. It's one of my favorite filters. The cutoff is at fifty seven hertz, and it's modulating upward. 43 with this LFO. The resonance is starting at 80% and this time it's going down negative 30. Now that means the peak is bigger in these lower areas and it gets slightly smaller as it comes down. So it's making this this kind of shape. You see what I'm drawing there with my mouse? That that's what it's doing there. Not by a lot, but it, it's, it's doing it because that's very critical. We didn't want to boost too much in this area because there are a lot of frequencies already in this area. We wanted just to boost those ones at the bottom to give it that sweeping motion, to give it a lot of depth. And that's what we were looking for here. I also used the notch filter here, which is a high pass notch filter. It's at 20% and it's modulating up 37%. So you can see it's doing the exact same thing as the actual high pass and they meet in the middle there and, and it's beautiful. So, mix is all the way up, pan is normal, drive is down. I have the keyboard tracking on and I don't exactly know why I have the keyboard tracking on. I guess it affects the sound. I normally only play it within like these few ranges here. Actually, I kind of made it in this note. And then I, I kind of went from there but I had to pitch it down. So I edited a few things to make sure for it to actually fit the song. Now, okay, that's the filter. Did I miss anything? Uh, mono legato. You don't want to play two of these at once. That'd be a mess. A little bit of portamento. Nothing, nothing huge. Just to keep it from clipping when you're pressing multiple notes. All right, in the effects section, start with a compressor, multiband compressor. Obviously, I always use that. It's modulating from zero to a hundred percent using the LFO. Uh, you can see my threshold is at negative 10.9 decibels. Ratio is at is 4 to 1. I believe the attack and release are the same. They're both 90. Yeah, and, and the gain's all the way down. I have it on multi-band. You can see where I position these bands here. That's how, that's just the way, I, the way I got them. So in the hyper dimension, this is good for widening the sound and 24% for the mix. I don't I didn't mess with the radar detune. I never usually it's at 4. So, 24% and for the size, y'all y'all know how this works. This is 1% for the size and up to 39% or 40% for the mix. Just to widen things out a little bit. And now for the distortion, I have a heavy tube distortion, but it doesn't come in until this LFO modulates up because it's at zero percent and it's modulating up like 90 so it's going there's no distortion at the bottom here and then there's almost full distortion at the top it's got a really like screechy effect let me take the distortion off you can hear it now with it on at the very top it just it makes everything a lot more powerful like excellence track here I could tell that has a lot of that has a lot of power behind it. It's not it's not a weak sound, so I add that a lot of distortion. Now the phaser, let's see, this is just mixing it. Okay. I did the whole where you turn the rate all the way down. I did that whole thing where it's at zero. The depth is also at zero. I usually do that. Frequency is at 36 hertz, and I'm modulating it up 37 with the LFO. Feedback is I believe it's normal, 80%, phase is in the middle, 180. And then we're, we're just mixing this in. It starts at 80% down at the bottom here, and it goes down 50%. So you, there's there's a high phaser, and the phaser kind of fades away because that messes with that messes with the harmonics too much. I just want a little bit of more sliding motion in there. 
So that that's how I achieved that some of that with the phaser. Uh, with the EQ, I have the frequency at of here of the high pass at 165 hertz, and it's going up 23. That's just kind of it's adding a little more sweeping motion, but I didn't want it necessarily for the sweeping motion. I just wanted to. Once it hits the top, I wanted to get rid of the muddy harmonics down at the low end because I'm I added an extra sub right here, so that that's what that did. The Q factor is 48%, so it was like barely peaking at all. Gain is at zero. I don't think the gain would do anything. Yeah, the gain wouldn't do anything. But I just had a little high pass there. And for this right here, let me see what this is doing. Oh, I see. Okay. What it's doing right here is the gain is all the way down on this shelving EQ, and I'm bringing it up 50%, so it's dulling the high end until it rises up, so that it, it may, makes it slide a little better. The frequency is also rising up. It's at 5654 <laughs> hertz, 5654, and it's going up 19. And that's just a, a little more sliding motion. That's probably not necessary. But I don't know. I, I like to I like to modulate everything. That's what I find makes basses sound better. That's my logic. Okay, I have on a hall reverb. The size is at 35% and the decay is at 4.7 seconds. Uh, low cuts all the way down. High cut is 35%. Spin and spin depth are normal. They're 25 and 20%. And we're just gonna modulate this in here again. It's at zero and we're modulating it in by 30 with this LFO. And that is the effects. The effects. Let me see how important the effects are. Let's take off all of these. This is our sound without any effects. Ah, very messy. The effects just add a lot more. What, what, what am I doing? Okay, there we are. The effects add a lot more depth and they make it sound a heck of a lot cooler. Yep, especially that compressor. That compressor just. That compressor makes everything better. The OTT for life. So yeah, that is how I went about making this excellent bass. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe what you think about this. And if there is a sound you'd like me to try to make in Serum or Massive or FL Native plugins, you, you can request it. I'll see, see what I say about that depending on how hard the bass is. I'll definitely give it a go. But you can request, request that down in the comments or on comment on any video. Like I only have like, a little over 20 subscribers don't think i won't see it because i will and i can get back to you on that all right hope you enjoyed this tutorial hope you found it helpful and as always i will see you in the next video peace